there are a lot of people feeling for you in a big way. And I think you can feel a lot of that, but a lot of them don't have access to be able to share that with you. And, and so some of um, the conversations have been feeling for you, can't imagine, how do you go on, you're so strong. Do you have moments of weakness when you just, I mean, I would imagine you do, and you don't have a lot of time for that because there's so much to do, but what, tell me about what that moment is like for you, and when does it happen? Like, Well, for me, just when I think I'm, you know, trying to get an understanding of this, and I'll run into somebody that I haven't seen yet, and then I break down again and I cry. So, so I guess to answer your question, every time I see someone that I haven't seen yet since the incident occurred, I think they need a heal and they want to touch me. And then I start crying all over again. Mm -hmm. And my friends are telling me that that's probably going to go on for a year because people want to grieve with you. And when they see you, they want to touch you. And obviously, when they touch me, and I start crying again. And, you know, it's just been amazing that the community and the support mm -hmm. is, it's beyond my wildest imagination. Mm -hmm. It's. It's unbelievable. Um, everybody, people I don't know. I've I've hugged and cried and kissed people I don't even know. I don't even know. And I thank all of them. And I wish I could see them again. I don't. You know, it's just been. It's just been amazing. We really just live in a wonderful, wonderful community, and we're surrounded by wonderful people. Do you, do you, is there a part of you that is relieved a little to get home and shut down at night, yeah. whatever time that is, and just mm -hmm. have your moment? I mean, Certainly, yeah. Even though we've had a lot of people, it's it's nice to just be alone with Mindy and, and Lucas. And, you know, Lucas is sleeping with us now, and I told him he can sleep with us for as long as he needs to. Mm -hmm. So the three of us are pretty much camped out together. Yeah. So we, during the days, we're kind of going maybe our separate ways, and then we meet up for a separate. Um, Lu Lucas has an entourage taking care of him. Somebody helped him go shopping, uh, make sure he had appropriate clothes to wear to the service, and someone got his hair cut, and um, he's got lacrosse practice that he might go to, so we, somebody lined that up. I mean, all I have to say or Lynn has to say is, oh, this might need to be done, and it's command central at our house. We have so many people at our house helping and making lists, and um, our family are helping, and um, and then we're coordinating with my mom's house because of my dad, and so my two brothers and I are talking about everything and um, rereading everyone and talking about rereading everything we've written and talking about what we're doing and why we're doing it, um, who's in charge of what. Um, so we're doing all of that. I was going to say, when I break down, I do, I do break down. I do cry. People have said I'm so strong, and it's not my intention to, to cry 24-7. If I needed to, I think I would. When I hug someone, like Glenn said, when you see someone, and I hug someone who knew Reed, like I know they knew him, my heart it breaks right then and then you can't control those tears so just like anyone when those tears come and um, when we talk about Boy Scouts that is the hardest thing for me to talk about because he was this close to getting his eagle and getting his driver's license and um, and that's frustrating but I've heard that the scouts are rallying for him and that's wonderful and I'm very very thankful for that um, he would tell you that I liked scouts more than he did and <laughs> maybe I did but you know, it was a, it was what we were doing it together, and the families we were working with. You know, the boys he crossed over with. We were all going through the same process together, and we were all sharing these stories. And when people talk about scouts, that's very hard for me. And um, you know, we had so many plans this summer. He he's so theatrical. He made it into Starlight Stars, and he was so jazzed about that. And um, it was such 
an argument to get him to wear a suit to the tryout. And then he said, Mom, I really rocked it. And so then when he went to try out for theater in the park, I'm going to wear a tie again, Mom. <laughs> and there wasn't even a conversation. And when he went, he was the most dressed up. And he loved it. He felt so good about himself, but it was his choice. And <sighs> Do you feel cheated? Yes. Yeah. I mean, we're going to miss prom. We're going to miss high school graduation. Those are the obvious things that are so hard to discuss. We're going to miss those things. His 15th birthday is May 21st. And we're going to we're going to celebrate that without him. And um but we're going to celebrate. Yeah. We're still going to celebrate. And what gives me peace and I hope Lynn peace is that I know they're in heaven. I know that my dad was killed and he grabbed Reed's hand and they went to heaven together. I know that. And I see them. I get up at three in the morning and I sleep in Reed's bed. And I do a lot of crying in his room. And I don't want his robe washed yet. And I don't want the last towel he used washed yet. I want to smell him and hold him close to me. He loved that blue robe and I love wrapping up in that blue robe and feeling my baby next to me. And he comes to me and we talk just like we used to talk and I just talk out loud to him. And uh, and that, I feel, I feel peace. I feel peace when I talk about that. so selfish right now because I cannot keep it together for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, do you have any pictures you would share with us of him when he was little? Oh my gosh, did Nikki, I don't know if Nikki brought any. It would just, you could send an email to me. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, yes. Oh, all kinds, yes. Because, um, we, like we have like a thousand pictures that a friend of ours put in a drop box because they're making a video for the service. Okay. Um, either we can take that and just grab a couple from it, but that seems such a He's private so thing. Adorable. But He's so adorable. If you could so just adorable. send us, we could just get a couple, or if, if you're on, if people helping you can maybe just take care of sending us a couple, then we can make that part of our story about Reed. And mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people will, they can imagine their kids doing the same things you described, and they'll be connected to you a little bit more. As, as we kind of wrap this up, what do you wish for this community? Whether it's the parent who told me, I don't think you were in here, um, was inspired by you and because you had said to try to find love over hate and not hate. And she said, you know, I let my kids eat. Did I tell you this story? There's a spoonful of chocolate out of the icing can because she was like, why not? Because that's what she said. And I kept my son home from school till 10 o'clock Monday morning just because I was like, you know what? We can be late today. We're going to mm -hmm. spend the morning together. Is that sort of, I mean, what do you want for this community as we all move and heal with you? Right. Well, at first, and I think still what, what Reet and my dad deserve is that good comes from this and that people love one another and care for one another as family and as friends as much as they can. They reach out and they hold a hand. They tell someone that they love them. They go to that soccer game, even when it's cold and windy and rainy. They go, and they be there with their children or their grandchildren. Um, I think that those are good things. I don't, I don't really have a list of, of anything else. I know a, somebody, a young man, I think, listed 10 good things to do. Yeah, it's it, on the face. So they've been creating the Facebook page. We've tried to talk to it. We're talking to him. Yeah, I think that's awesome that, you know, sure, let's just create a list and do these 10 good things. And I would love to talk to him and say, thank you so much. It's from your heart. I know another young man that's very close with Reed. They went to Canacuck together. We've traveled with them. They met when they were four at pre-K. And his name is Josh Miller, and he's making bracelets for Reed. And they say, remember Reet, and I think it's Romans 8, 28. And um, 
what do I want to come from this? What do we want to come from this? Just, you know, love, love should supersede hate. We, if we all loved, then we will squash evil and hate. And, um, yeah, if it's eating the icing first, if it's having dessert first, if it's eating the ice cream first, if it's staying home from school that extra hour and snuggling in bed, then that's what it is. It, it, it may be different for everybody. So it's not for us to judge what that is. It's just to know that open your heart and share with others so that you feel God's love. And I think someone said to me, and maybe it was Pastor Hamilton, when I told him, I said, God prepared me for this, and I didn't know it. And I would rather have not been prepared for this event, but I'm thankful that God has prepared me. Maybe it was my entire life that God prepared me for this. I have not been able to not listen to any other music other than encouraging music for two years. Mm -hmm. They get in my car and it's either K-Love or um, 88.5, local, the new local um, encouraging station, Life 88.5. And the boys sing songs with me and I belt them out and I just know that I have been being prepared for this. And when I saw my dad, I heard the words, he's in heaven, go find Reet. And I went to Reet, and it was blurry. And I think it was blurry on purpose. And, um, and that's probably good, because I have a wonderful image of what he looked like as he left the house. He looked so handsome. He was in his brand new suit and his hat and his black shirt and his cream tie. And he was ready to knock him out of the park. And he is now in heaven. 